Hello everyone, and thank you for joining us for another playlist to help you move from an absolute beginner to a beginner entry level programmer. So after this playlist, we hope you will have the sufficient skills to be an entry level developer in using the C-sharp language. So the playlist will focus on the C-sharp language and the development platform. So you will learn all the keywords, syntax, concepts to help you in your journey to being a programmer. So if you have not done so yet, please subscribe and ring the bell for the latest news and updates. We hope that these tutorials will be helpful to you. So we split the tutorials into multiple sessions as it would be too much to digest in just one sitting. There is a prerequisite for this playlist. So if you're an absolute beginner, then please spend some time and review the absolute beginner's tutorials. If you have some experience or brushing up on basics of C-sharp language, then you're in the right place. So before we get started, let's do a technical review of everything you've learned so far. So as you see, this is our tic-tac-toe game from the previous playlist. The following review isn't meant that you have to remember everything or that we will discuss all the details of each feature or concept, but just a mere guide to help augment and cement what you've learned so far. In the later lessons, we'll go much deeper into each concept. So let's go over solutions and projects. When creating an application using Visual Studio 2019 for C Sharp, a solution is created. The solution is a container that holds one or more projects. So far, we only have one project for all our console applications. The project contains our source code files and all the dependencies, as well as how to build our application. We will learn a great deal more about solutions and projects as we continue to enhance our skills. We have only been using one source code file, the programs.cs, containing instructions to execute our program. If we look deeper into our code file, you will no doubt have recognized a pattern. Visual Studio has color coded our source code file. If you've not modified the defaults of Visual Studio, then all the blue words in the code files are keywords. They are used internally by c -sharp language and are reserved so you cannot use them. For example, you cannot name your variable the same name a C sharp keyword. C sharp language is case sensitive. The next color is a lighter shade of blue representing classes. A good practice is one class per code file and their names match, but you can have more than one class per code file. Classes contain what we have referred to commands, but our calling methods. So moving forward, we will call them methods. We will learn more about classes later on. Methods help us reuse our code and are color-coded sandy brown. We can pass data in and we can get data out, and the method should do only one thing. A double backslash and color-coded green denote comments. The comments help to document and provide instructions for other developers who may come behind you to develop or fix bugs. So a good practice is to name your variables and methods. So it's clear on what they are intended to do. Variables hold data to be used at a later time. Variable data can be many types. In the next session, you will learn all about types. When writing c -sharp code, all statements are terminated by a semicolon. A statement block or declaration defines the scope. Curly braces define c -sharp scope. Statements are actions that programs take. Some common statements that we have used are declaring variables, assigning values, calling methods, including looping through collections and branching, if else. Expressions are one or more operators and zero or more operators that can be evaluated to a single value and we used it in winning, move, and game drop. So now let's get a greater understanding of our development ecosystem. You don't have to remember the following now, but it's a good idea to pay attention and learn the basics. This becomes really important if you're looking for an entry-level programming position and the prospective employer will want to know if your skills have a strong foundation. So far, we have discussed C-sharp, which is a good time to scale up our understanding of C-sharp language 
and it's placed in the developer platform. Now you are wondering what is a developer platform? Well, it is what we have used so far. C Sharp, one of the languages to build applications and the libraries like system.console and file.append all text that make up our applications. This is the developer platform Microsoft calls. It's developerplatform.net. You can use .NET to develop any kind of application from artificial intelligence, gaming, mobile, web, and many more. So in this channel, we will go over all of them. .NET has many languages. C Sharp, which is what we're using, Visual Basic, and F Sharp are some of the other languages to build .NET applications on a platform. So far, we use .NET Core that runs anywhere, Windows, Linux, and Mac OS. Then there is .NET Framework, where you can build apps for Windows only, and both are open source. To build mobile apps, you can use Xamarin Mono. We also have .NET Standard, which is just a specification. One example is if you write .NET Core application, but have a legacy application in .NET Framework, and you want to share your libraries, then you would build a .NET Standard library. Now both .NET Core and .NET Framework can share the libraries without having to worry about the different versions of the BCL. BCL contains classes like strings, collections that we've used so far and many more. Strings may be treated differently in Mac OS or Linux, so the .NET standard abstracts that versioning for us. At some point, Microsoft will produce a single .NET runtime and framework .NET 5, a unified platform for developing any application on any device. Now let's take a look at how our tools generate an executable and what happens when we use that executable. You don't need to remember all this, but later on, as we discuss these topics, it should help you get familiar. And by the time you finish this playlist, you should be able to explain the topics and discuss them. As an entry level programmer, you should understand the concept, but as an intermediate and advanced developer, you should be able to go deeper in explaining the differences. So don't worry, we will build up your skills to be able to discuss them intelligently. What happens when you build an application? Your tools, in this case, Visual Studio 2019, will build your code file into an executable using a compiler. The compiler is reasonable for emitting common intermediate language, CIL, code. Most people call it IL, but you could target it to build into native code. Now, when you double click or use the command line to execute your application, the operating system knows that it's a .NET application and uses Core CLR to host your application. Core CLR is the runtime for a .NET Core and will execute your application code. So before doing so, it checks to see if the CIL needs to be converted to into native code. And if so, then it will build to native code using JIT compiler. Native code is something that your computer understands to execute the instruction in your application. While your application is running, Core CLR will also manage your application's memory and clean up unused data called garbage collector. There are other features of Core CLR, but for now, this should be good. We will come back once you know more about .NET in later topics and explain again. This is a great review. So let's talk about what you'll learn in the next tutorial. So in the next tutorial, we'll discuss in detail what types, variables, and values are. Thank you so much for your time, and we will look forward to seeing you again.